Glory be to God. Glory to God. I'm thankful today to be here. Um, we have a beautiful day outside. Um, and by his mercy and love, we are still here today. Today, it's very ironic and coincidental that my sermon is named Climbing the Mountain of Faith and Trust. I was gone all week on a work trip in North Carolina. I never talked to anybody from the youth about what they were going to sing about, what they were going to talk about or preach about. But somehow, it came out to be almost the exact same thing. And as I was sitting here listening to every gentleman that was preaching, I was like, we're talking about the same thing. We're going to be referring to almost the same scriptures. And a week ago, I had an entirely different sermon planned out, but I couldn't tie them two together somehow. And I had an intro done, and everything was ready to go, except I just couldn't bring myself to tie it all together with trust and another topic. So I decided I was going to just go ahead and write a whole new sermon just this weekend and save that one for another time. So if you guys want to hear it, come in uh, sometime in the near future, and you can listen to it. So... I had it all mapped out in my head, that past sermon, but as I was on the plane Friday night, you know, it's weird how the Holy Spirit works whenever you have one thing planned out, but all of a sudden, like a click, I had a whole different sermon in my head. Um, So whenever I was given or read, I was given the topic or theme of today's worship service, it was to talk about trust. And one of the first questions I had in my mind was trust and faith. Are they exactly the same or are they different? In the Bible, it refers to trust and faith as almost the exact same thing, but yet are very different. Is faith the same as trust? If you put it in this context and say, if I believe in you or I I have faith in you, does that mean I trust you? Or if you reversed it and said, I have trust in you, that means I believe in you. The second one can be inaccurate. So what is the difference between faith and trust? I would like all of us to turn to Luke chapter 8, 43. And this is a story of a woman who has been sick many years and then she, she heard that Jesus was coming through. And as he was walking down the road, there was a multitude of people that were following him. And they were all probably packed tightly together and you couldn't hardly get through. But she persisted on and she wanted to touch Jesus. And in chapter 8, verse 43, it reads, And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any came behind him and touched the border of his garment and immediately her issue of blood stanched. And Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied Peter and they were with him, said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee and say, thou, who touched me? And Jesus said, somebody touched me. For I perceive that virtue has gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him, before the people for what cause she had touched him and she was healed immediately and he said unto her daughter be of good comfort thy faith hath made thee whole go in peace while he spoke there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue saying to him the daughter is dead trouble not the master but when Jesus heard it he answered him saying fear not believe only and she shall be made whole. And in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, what is faith? Faith through the scripture says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. In other words, faith is being sure that we will get what we hope for. It is being sure even of the things we cannot see. Faith or believing is a noun in the dictionary. I'm going to get a little bit English school type, 
So if we have any English teachers in here, please don't. If you have any questions or comments to me, please see me afterwards. I never really liked back in English class whenever I get a lot of red pen on my paper. It just didn't make me feel right. But a noun is a person, a place, or a thing. That thing also counts as believing. So what can we learn from this woman? She didn't trust Jesus that he was going to heal her. She first believed in Jesus, and then he healed her. She believed, or she had faith in his healing power. Now, trust in a dictionary is actually a verb, which is an action. It's doing something. Trust comes from faith. When you write a sentence, normally the noun comes before the verb. So whenever we go and we try to trust something, we have to first believe that there will be good coming out of it. We have to, we have, to have faith in it. So faith has to come before trust whenever we, we talk about God. Let's turn to Daniel chapter 6, verse 23. And here it says, this talks about Daniel, how he, his faith had brought him into a troubled time where he was being tested by a king for believing in God. And here he stands in front of a den full of lions. And he knows, or what everybody else around him knows, is we're going to throw him in here. He's going to be eaten and we'll see how strong his faith or his trust is in, in God. And it says, the king was overjoyed whenever he, so the king walks over to the den after a few days and he looks in and Daniel's still alive amongst all these lions. And he was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him because he had trusted in God. Now, if you, depending on which Bible or version you have, trusted and believed is written the exact same way. But really, when you think about it, could have Daniel trusted God and not believed in him first? Or should he have to believe in God to be able to trust God? What does Daniel show us in this passage is his belief or his faith brought him to that lion pit. But the trust in God saved him from it. If he was not only to believe in God, what would the outcome be? If he was just like, okay, God, I believe in you, but I don't really trust that, you know, you could save me from this, what would happen? If we trust God before we believe in him, is it worth our time? Or are we simply just wasting our time because we're trusting before we believe in? Whenever, for example, let's put it this way. If you were to take your money to a bank and hand it to them, do we first hand it to them and trust them first? Or do we have to believe that they are a legitimate bank and they will keep your money safe? Whenever we meet somebody new out on the street and they say, hey, get in this car with me, let's go drive. Do we first get in the car with them and then, and then have faith or believe that they mean well for us? That they're not going to hurt us? No. We first try to uh, use like the process of elimination and first believe that they are good people and then we learn to trust them. Trusting before believing God is like doubting him. It's like saying, Lord, I trust that you're going to do something good, but I don't really know that you're real, or I don't really believe that it can all happen. In Psalms 9:10, it says, And for those who know, have faith, which believe in you, your name put the trust in you. So here it says, those who first believe or have faith in you, 
they put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. So let's ask ourselves the question, how does faith and trust apply to our lives? Even if they're the same or different, it doesn't matter. Now let's look into the story of Moses. I read the chapter 19, and here Moses in Exodus, whenever he uh, took his people and they left Egypt. After so many trials with the Pharaoh, he finally let him go. And after about three months of wandering through the wilderness, they came to the wilderness of Sinai. And Moses went up to the mountain to talk to God. And he did this several times. And we know that going up a mountain isn't quite as easy as we sometimes think it is. But Moses would go up, then he'd come right back down. He would go up, talk to God, and he'd come back down. Mountains are hard to climb, but we get better every time we do this. We know several things about mountains. They are rocky. They are dangerous. They are steep. They have unknown territory, uncertainty. But the view, whenever you conquer this mountain, is great. The more mountains that we can climb in our life, we can grow in faith and trust in God more. And when Moses went up to the mountain, he spoke with God up there because he was always there. And we see this in many stories of the Bible. Even Jesus, whenever he would go to pray, he would go to the hillside. And whenever God is referenced in the Bible many times, he is up on a mountain. What is it about our faith and mountains? What do these mountains represent? The life of Moses is very closely related to our life. You see, whenever we were sinners, we were like the, the slaves in Egypt. And when we, we were finally freed, all of a sudden, there's mountains in the way. So mountains symbolically represent the ups and downs in our lives. Sometimes we see them as a roadblock or we can look at them as an opportunity. Whenever Moses was in Egypt and every time he would go up to the Pharaoh and say, let my people go, the Pharaoh would be like, all right, go. Go do what you need to do and uh, worship your God. Except God would harden Pharaoh's heart and he would say, no, now you guys can't go. God was putting a mountain in front of Moses ever since he was in Egypt. And Moses, he could have stood there at the bottom of this mountain and said, okay, well, the Pharaoh is the ruler of the land. We don't want to die. We're going to just stand here and just do as he says. Or he could be like Moses, and he climbed that mountain. He overtook the Pharaoh eventually. So the Pharaoh was Moses' mountain right there in Egypt. However, it never discouraged him. The mountain never intimidated him. It never brought mistrust in his God or chipped away at his faith in God. Same with the mountains in our lives. They're not here to discourage us, to intimidate or bring mistrust. When Daniel was thrown to the lions, that was his mountain in front of him. He could have stood there at the entrance of that den and said, God, I believe in you. You saved me. Here I go to the lions. I'm going to die for you as a martyr. But no, Daniel had the, believed in God so much and he trusted that God was going to protect him. God, whenever he trusted in God, he scaled that mountain that was put in front of him. When the woman was sick, she wanted to touch the clothes of Jesus. She had that huge mountain set in front of her. It was the multitude of people. It was Jesus that was walking down the road, probably away from her. But yet she had the faith in Jesus that she decided, she goes, I am going to go touch the garments of Jesus. That was the mountain in front of her, and she decided she was going to scale it because she believed in God. God doesn't put mountains in front of us so we can stop and rest at the bottom of them. He wants us to have the faith and trust in his plan and to climb them. He wants us to reach to the top so he can show you the amazing view of his glory. The climb 
will never be easy. Moses could have easily just stopped at the Pharaoh and basically submitted to him, and he could have toiled in slavery for the rest of his life, except he believed in God and he trusted in the promises of God whenever he said he was going to get him out of Egypt. He knew there was better waiting for him on top of that mountain. Daniel could have easily stood at the den and said his last prayer to die. But his strong faith and his trust in God kept him safe when God sent an angel down to shut the mouths of the lions. And Daniel was spared. The woman could have suffered longer and made excuses why she couldn't go through that crowd to touch the garments of Jesus. She could have said that there's many people in the way I can't, I can't get there soon enough. But she decided she was going to climb that mountain in front of him. Sometimes we make excuses for not taking those chances whenever we have mountains set in front of us. If you feel that there is a mountain in front of you, don't make excuses. Have faith in God and trust in him that he will help you up that mountain and he will deliver you. God doesn't put mountains in front of us to intimidate us, but he wants to show you the glory of what you are capable of when you put your faith and trust in him. Just like Moses, it may take us days. It must take us weeks. It might take us years to climb a mountain set before us. Or like Daniel, our faith will be tested and tried. Our faith might bring us up to the mountain, but it's the trust in him that you will climb. I encourage you today not to be intimidated by the mountain. I encourage you to walk in faith and trust in God because when your faith brings us to a mountain, trust God, he will put us up on top of that mountain to see his very glory. Just like that woman, she could have made every excuse not to walk through the huge crowds. She was sick, she was weak, but she chose and she had the faith and the utmost wanting to go up to Jesus and be healed because she believed in him. Because at the top of that mountain for her was Jesus Christ and her healing. In Joshua 1.9, it says these words. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid or be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I also stumbled upon this quote. It was from Anthony Robbins just last night. And it kind of touched me about our lives and the mountains that we uh, endure. And, it says, and he says this, The past does not equal the future because you failed yesterday or all day today. Or a moment ago or for the last six months, the last 16 years of your life. That doesn't mean anything. All that matters is what you are going to do right now. Same with our life whenever God puts mountains before us. Are they going to intimidate us? Or are we going to stop and say, well, we're done. We're just going to stay here. Or are you going to fully believe in the promises of God and trust him with your life? I encourage all of us today, no matter how big our mountain is, you can climb it. God will be, be there with you till the end. He will show you the view of his glory from the top. And he will show you how strong you really are whenever you believe and put your trust in God. No matter how long it takes for us to climb that mountain, a day, week, years, what matters most is that God will never bring you to something that he cannot bring you through. In everything, we need to have faith in God. And when we have faith in God, we can fully trust in him. Amen.